Hey guys, this video is going to go on our how to do stuff in Japan playlist because it may be of some help to somebody in helping them understand some of the things that happen around us in Japan. There's a Hanozi guy that we know who during all sorts of discussions about things that happen in Japan and things that happen to us in our lives will we'll often say, they're robots mate. <laughs> when referring to Japanese people. They're robots, mate. Robots. Robots. They're robots, mate. Now, that's not, that's not what we're saying in this video. That's not the message. That's not the message in this video at all. <laughs> so, please nobody get upset. We always have to be careful with videos like, that, we, like this. We get lots of dislikes on videos like this because some people don't like anything that might be in any way uh, critical or any way negative which isn't the plan of this video is not to be critical or negative it's just to share some observation to what we see so this week there has been a few things that have happened that sort of trigger this video because it came up a bit it came up a bit this this week with the their robots robots mate they're robots um one of them was there was a story that was reported in the in the in the media about referring to the the teenagers snapping there's actually a word for it in Japanese and it's when it's when people are, are going along doing their normal thing and then suddenly they snap and about 10 on average about 10 teenagers in Japan every year snap and kill somebody so sometimes it's triggered by bullying or other things like that and they just snap for, for, for because they can't take it anymore. They snap and they and they stab someone or they hit someone with a hammer or do something like that and kill somebody. So some people would say 10, 10 teenagers out of 127 million people is actually pretty low. So we've got to remember when we're talking about stuff like that that relatively, you know, in Japan crime levels are really really low. Um, but obviously, you know, 10 teenagers killing 10 people. Um, in a year is not a good thing either so there was that um, there was another one another circumstance this week where someone gave me some news that was that was uh, disappointing it was disappointing someone told me something it was very disappointing now we talk about all the time about about maintaining the harmony don't we and not showing any emotions you know any any emotions that might upset anybody or bother anybody so so I was, this person told me something that was pretty disappointing and I did my best I really did I, I thought I did a pretty good job of going oh shogunai 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 it's okay it can't be helped it's okay it can't be helped and and I thought I did a pretty good job of not showing any emotion and then later on the person I'd been talking to the person who told me the disappointing news told somebody else that I'd got angry <laughs> which which, seriously guys, if there'd been a video on the scene and you guys had seen the video, you'd be saying, you weren't angry, right? Um, I didn't actually have any angry emotion at all. I, I was disappointed. I was feeling some, some fairly, fairly strong disappointment, but I thought I'd concealed it well enough and, and had hidden it well enough and just been going, oh, it's okay, no, that's fine, that's fine, no problem at all, no problem at all, in Japanese, you know? And ah, oh, But apparently did a poor job of concealing it. See, relatively relative to Japanese people, and this is sort of one of the things that's triggered this video. You know, it, it, our our friend would say that that usually, and again, these are all generalizations. It's not always the case. But our friend would say that generally Japanese people's reactions to things are fairly robotic. He wouldn't say fairly, he'd just say they're robots, mate. But th th this is the sort of thing, that the reason why he says that is that, is that, and as we've talked about on previous videos, lots of the things in this video have been talked about in previous videos, but this is sort of a bringing it together in relation to this whole people are robots thing. And and it's, it's, it's why we say that, is that, is that, Japanese people are usually extremely good at hiding their real emotions and quite often you will not know you know the whole things about maintaining 
uh, harmony. So it's all about smiling and, and, and everything's good. You know, smiling, yep, no problem, everything's good. And, and they're really, really good at it. Or being nice to you when they really don't like you. Or, you know, whatever, whatever negative emotion a, a human being might show, Japanese people are usually very good at concealing it, so you'll never know. And it, and it fools it fools people. It doesn't matter how long you live here either. They are so good at it. And usually, non-Japanese people are so bad at it, really. So we think we managed to hide. You know, I thought this week I managed to hide my disappointment pretty well. But no, nah, no. Nah, they knew I wasn't happy. And, and they actually misinterpreted it as I was angry. Oh, we think he was angry. So they would have thought I was angry and I was concealing it, whereas in actual fact, I was just disappointed and I was trying to conceal it, but not well enough, apparently. But these guys are so good at it. And that's a sort of, that's sort of one of the points of this video is to say, is to say that if you're gonna be in Japan, that you really, it's better to try and do it too. And that's, that's the, the sort of the positive we're wanting to get from talking about this is that if we can understand this and 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 try to achieve it ourselves you know it's worth it there, there are a lot of people as we always say with the how-to videos there are a lot of people who come to japan and say i'm not japanese i'm going to do it my way um, and that's fine too you can do that of course but we have found that you get better results if you try to do things in japan the way japanese people do it um, and showing negative emotions in japan it never is good you know never even this week trying to hide that disappointment um, it, it's not good it makes waves when you when you don't manage to you know hide your ne any negative emotion it does seem to make waves that come back come back and splash you in the face at some stage so it's much better if you can try and do it the Japanese way you know and if you can understand to what level they can do it and 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 the way they conceal their emotion is almost to a robotic level you just would not would not know it you would not know it, and, and people, it doesn't matter how long you live here, you know, non-Japanese people are regularly surprised when they find out the truth, you know, that, that, that a person, it turns out that a person wasn't happy with something and cancelled their business relationship with you or, you know, or the, some other thing happens and you go, wow, I had no idea. I only spoke to that person yesterday and I thought they were my best friend in the world. You know, and it happens all the time here. And because we get a laugh, because quite often we hear stories, people leave comments and things and tell us, you know, that, that I, was in, I was in Tokyo and I showed everybody my tattoos and everyone thought they were cool, you know? And you think, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure they did, you know? So there's that, there's that, that, that aspect of Japanese life. And then what happens is the way people live here with school and work and everything else, everyone's expected to do the same thing and that's and that's sort of drummed into Japanese people from when they're really little everything the way people greet each other is expected to be the same greeting you know so everyone says you know in some countries you walk into a room and say hi and some person says oh good morning and someone else says hello and oh good to see you and g'day and what's up and all different greetings you know not in Japan you walk into a room and say hi zamas everyone goes hi zamas usually together as one and the greetings are all the same and you know, konnichiwa, konnichiwa, and onigashimasu, onigashimasu, and all the greetings are the same, and the behaviour's the same, and everybody bows the same, and everybody has a genkan and takes their shoes off, and everybody does this, and everybody does this, and those of you who have kids here, you know, all the kids are, carry the same things in their bags, and have the same bags, they have the same bags, put the same things in their bags, and off they go to school and put them in the same place, and and everything's, everything's robotic, really. Every, everybody's doing the same behavior with the same things and doing the same way. And it's all about being the same. Everyone's being the same and saying the same things and doing the same things. And that's, that's what it's like at school. That's what it's like, you know, as, as they go into high school, they, start, they wear uniforms. Everyone looks the same and dresses the same. They have really strict codes <coughs> for haircuts and things. All the hair has to be cut within certain parameters, you know, and I let it hair over the years, it's got a certain length and and then if you're gonna be have longer hair it has to be in a ponytail in that way and it has to be this, that and the other and you can't have jewellery and you can't have piercings and you can't have this and can't have that. And the end result is that, you know, you look at high school kids here and they all look the same. 
and that's that's life in Japan, you know, and it's like that all the time. It works the same, and everyone goes to Juku. Everyone goes to, not everybody, that's not really true, but most people go to Juku, most people go to club, most people do this, most people do that. And that's life in Japan, you know, and that's this constant programming through life that you've got to do the same as everybody else. And that's, that's often the reason you get told we're doing this and you say, oh, why is that? Everyone does it. And that's, that's often the, the only explanation you'll get. Everyone's doing it or everybody does it. And that's the reason that we're doing it. Why are we doing that? Oh, everyone's doing it. Why are we doing that? Oh, everyone does that. That's why we're doing it. And and wait a minute, why can't I do that? Oh, nobody does that, right? So the reason that you're doing the thing is because everyone does it. And the reason you can't do the other thing or you can't do it your way is because no one does it that way. And that's the end of it, you know? And a lot of the cultures we come from you know, blazing your own trail or doing it your own way is, is, is good, isn't it? But in Japan, it's not. No, no one does that, and that's the end of it. Um, Japanese companies will tell you, we've contacted lots of Japanese companies in the past about our English-friendly directory, and they'll say, they've never done that, I've never, we've never done that before, and, and that, that's the end, you know that's the end of it when they say that. Oh, uh, yes, we'll, we'll pass on the message. Um, we've never done that before, and you know that's the end of it because they're not going to do anything they haven't done before. <laughs> it's, that'd be crazy, wouldn't it, doing something new? Whereas the, the, the foreigner-owned businesses as we contact say, oh, I haven't heard of the English Family Directory before. That's a good idea. We'll give it a shot. We'll give it a, it sounds like a good idea. We'll give it a try. Give it a try for a year and see how it goes. You know, that's the Western thinking, isn't it? Oh, something new, let's try that. Whereas the Japanese, no, haven't done that before, and that's the end of it. So, so again, that's the purpose of this video. If you can understand, if, if this sort of helps you understand a bit the Japanese thinking when it comes to things like this, you know, the end result is we don't try real hard at all anymore when we find out a, a company that seems to be English friendly is actually Japanese managed or Japanese owned. We don't try real hard to get onto them because usually it's a waste of time because they haven't done it before so they're not going to be doing it now so it's sort of across the board and because the look and the other thing that should be added is because of this japan is a really harmonious great place to live for most of us you know and the positive thing that comes from that that everybody is behaving the same way things like low low, low crime rates everything's very smooth and efficient um, it makes for a really harmonious society. It's like bees or ants, isn't it? And we've talked about the hive mentality before. Is that, you know, when everyone's working together and doing things the same way, it has good results. It really does. It usually, you know, in most cases and usually, the results are quite positive and, and it makes for a good place to live. The problem is, is the exceptions. The problem is, is the people that can't conform to this or struggle to conform and be the same as everyone else and that's often foreigners and um, this is why the statistics show that most foreigners that come to Japan with the intention of staying long term actually go home much earlier than they thought they would because they find it's really hard to live here. We've had people come visit us for a holiday that, that, that li liked the place but found it really hard to be here because we're constantly telling them that they could and couldn't do things because they had to conform to what everybody else was or wasn't doing and they, they didn't like that real much at all and for that reason a lot of foreigners don't last here um, but for Japanese people it's even worse because if you're a Japanese person and you struggle to conform here it can be a real struggle and and when you follow that through the result of that and because what happens is the individuality thing or the um, it is not considered to be important at all. Doing things your own way or having your own feelings or thoughts is not considered to be a good thing. Um, it's all about the group. So, and then things like psychology, psychology and parenting skills and, and, and all those sort of things are really back in the 50s. It really hasn't, we've mentioned that many times, it, it really hasn't progressed. The, psych, the psychology, the way psychology is seen and implemented and parenting skills and human relations are really back in the 50s in a lot of ways you know compared to other countries and 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 
the result of those things combined is that what you're getting is people are just getting told to conform. You must do it the same as everyone else. And if they struggle to do that, they're just told, Gimbare, try harder, try your best, try your best. Gimbare, 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 Gimbare. And what happens is that's fine most of the time, but occasionally you get someone who's pushed to the limit. And then while they're right on the edge, everyone around them, family, friends, everyone around them saying to them, Gimbare, keep trying harder, keep trying harder, keep trying harder. And once person's at their limit and they're still getting told to keep trying harder, quite often that results in tragedy. So that's why 30,000 suicides a year, um, not all of them are from that reason, of course, but a lot of them are. You know, that, that there might be 10 teenagers a year that, that snap and, and kill people because of this same thing, but there's a lot more teenagers every year that throw themselves in front of trains because they can't take the stress anymore from being pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. And nobody nobody is sitting them down and, and, and talking with them and doing sort of what in most countries would be normal sort of psychology or counseling or support or conversation. <clears throat> conversation, I mean, you know, people don't talk about their, their emotions and feelings and things generally here. So if they are struggling, usually they won't talk to anyone about it. And that's considered because they don't want to make waves, right? You know, I couldn't talk about my disappointment when I was given my disappointing news this week because that would bring other people down. So I have to pretend everything's fine, right? And when you're a healthy, well-balanced person, you can sort of do that. But when you're, when you're at the edge and you can't take it anymore, that could result in, in tragedy, couldn't it? 30,000 30, suicides a year, you know? And, and a lot of them, if you really found out why, because we know, we've had them... We know people here who've suicided and we know the people around them. And usually what happens is you go to the funeral and, and someone will quietly tell you, yes, he was sick, he was sick, he'd been sick. And you know it wasn't physically sick, it's just that, that because he's killed himself, ah, he wasn't coping, you know, he was, he was sick, they'll say. And that's the end, oh, Bjorki, yeah, Bjorki dashed in there. And that's the end of it. Or, usually they don't talk about it at all. The only reason I heard that conversation was because it was family. And, and you get to hear the, what, you know, what the other people are saying about it. But usually they either won't talk about it at all why he killed himself, um, or they'll put it down to he was sick, which just means that he, you know, he was depressed or he was struggling or he was, you know, whatever other natural human emotion the guy was feeling and getting told he to gambaru and gambaru. Basically, trying to make human beings behave like robots which is what the society does, trying to expect people to behave like robots works reasonably well most of the time, but occasionally, obviously, that's gonna have bad results, isn't it? Because people are not robots and people do have feelings and emotions and thoughts and things. And when they're constantly being suppressed, it can have a bad result, can't it? So, those of you who've, who've already been to Japan or those of you who live in Japan will recognize, and, and once you start to get this robot thing in your head, you see examples of it all the time. It helps explain a lot of things. Now, not trying to be put this in a critical way or a negative way at all, but just if you keep in mind that that's sort of the goal of Japanese society, is to, and, and most Japanese people see, see this sort of thinking as being good, that, and, and, and usually the result is good. So that's why everybody's thinking. It's good if everyone does it the same way. It's good every, if everybody's thinking the same thing. And it's true most of the time, 99% of the time it is true. If everybody's got the same way of doing things and everybody's going for the same goals, that the, result, the results are good 99% of the time. But, you know, now and again, the results are not good. So I made a whole list of stuff here. Oh, the bullying, that's it, that's another one, is, is because everybody's expected to act the same. Oh, look, just look what these guys are wearing for a second. You've got a girl there in a jumper and you've got an, a lady there in a jumper as well. That's another thing we noticed this week was everybody started wearing long sleeves and wearing warm clothes and, and, and things. The temperature today is 30 degrees. That's just a, a small example of the robot thing is once, once the, the clothes, okay, so the autumn fashions come out now, people have started wearing long sleeve things and woolen, woolen hats and, and warm, like almost winter clothes. But the temperature today is 30 degrees. So 
So it's sort of like nobody's sort of thinking, hey, wait a minute, it's 30 degrees today. I don't really need the long sleeve woolen shirt. They're just sort of automatically all starting to dress like that. And then what happens is, what happens and what happens is you walk in somewhere in with a short sleeve shirt on and they start to comment on that. Oh, you're wearing a short sleeve shirt. Some of you might remember this was mentioned on a video a while ago, was that sometimes the pressure to conform even comes down to your clothes. Because, because if it's winter, even if it's, if it's winter and it's a particularly warm day and it's 25 degrees or 26 degrees and you walk in somewhere in a t-shirt, everyone you run, run into will say, oh, short sleeve shirt, oh, short sleeve shirt, oh, short sleeve shirt, to the point where when you're getting dressed, you'll actually not wear a short sleeve shirt just so you don't have to deal with that all day. And this is the thing, when you live here, these pressures to be the same and conform and do what everybody else is doing, you, you, you find yourself doing it. Just because it's easier, and here's the bullying thing, right? If people do things differently, um, and particularly kids, but adults too to a certain extent, if you do anything differently to the way everybody else is doing it, you will get pressure. And, from, and for kids that can come in the form of bullying. If you're different or you're behaving different or saying something different or doing something different, there's a good chance you'll be bullied as a kid here. Um, and as an adult, you can find you're getting hassled about stuff here. You know, if you're a bit overweight here, you'll get patted on the stomach by people that barely know you and being told, oh, you're getting a bit heavy there, which is amazing in a country. Talk about the contradictions and paradoxes video that we made. You know, in a country where people rarely touch each other, quite common for, for dudes to pat other dudes on the stomach, dudes like me, who've got a bit of a stomach and pat on the stomach and go, oh, the stomach's got a bit big there, right? Because most people here don't have a big stomach. So just, oh, your stomach's getting a bit big. And there's that, that constant sort of anything that you do or say or think that, or have that's different from anyone else will get commented on. Because not being the same as everybody else, not being the same model robot as everybody else, will attract attention, which again, makes it really hard for foreigners here sometimes. Um, but it's going to make it hard for a certain percentage of, of Japanese people too. So we're just about out of time. But you're sort of getting the idea, this might even deserve another video at some stage. But, but you know, those of you who lived here can probably think of another million examples. And, and you know, once you start to think like this or get aware of things like this, you can be finding examples to this every day. Robots, mate, robots. Robot behaviour. So, anyway, that'll do for now. More videos coming soon.